Today we are going to learn how to create watercolor effect from a photo in Photoshop. So let's get started. And I suggest you to follow along with this tutorial to get a better understanding. The link of this image is mentioned in the description. First open the image. While holding Alt or Option, double click on background layer to unlock the layer. Now let's resize it. Go to image, canvas size. Set the width 3000 pixel and height will be 3000 pixel. It will be a square. Hit OK. Now this pop-up is telling us the new canvas size is smaller than the current canvas size. Some clip will occur. Don't worry about it. Just proceed. Move the image to the center. Now while holding Alt Shift, scale it down proportionally from the corner. Have some space from all sides. Now take the object selection tool. Click on select subject. It will automatically make a selection. Add a layer mask on it. Right click on layer mask. Apply layer mask. The background is removed. To work non-destructively, right click on layer and convert it into a smart object. Now press Ctrl or Command J to create a duplicate layer so that later we can see the difference. For now, hide the bottom layer. We will work on the top layer. Let's apply some filters to get the watercolor effect. Go to filter, open filter gallery. Click on dry brush. Pan the image to see its effect. Increase the brush size to 10 and brush detail will also be 10 so both values will be 10 except a texture value will be 1 hit ok you can see here because we are using smart object it becomes a smart filter let's apply another filter go to filter click on filter gallery select cutout it will reduce the level of detail in term of color and shapes you can control the levels from here but all the values are looking fine to me. Except for the edge simplicity, we can increase its value to lower the detail. Set its value to 4. Hit OK. Now double click on blending option for filters. Change the layer mode to pin light. It will blend both filters in the image. Hit OK. Now again go to filter, blur, smart blur. Set the radius to 5. Threshold will be 40 and quality will be high, hit OK. Now we are going to blend the blur effect with the bottom filters. Double click on blending option for smart blur. Set the blend mode to screen, it will lighten our image. Let's reduce its opacity to 50%. Hit OK. Now when we zoom in, you can see the difference. It looks like something painted over the canvas, but it's not complete yet. Double click on layer, rename it as image. Remember naming is very important when you are working with multiple layers and groups. Now press Ctrl or Command J to create a duplicate layer. Rename it as sketch line. Hide it for now. Select the image layer. Add a new layer right above the image layer. Name it watercolors. Take the brush tool, right click and expand the watercolor splatters. There are a bunch of brushes you can choose from. And if you are wondering where you can download these brushes, the download link of these brushes is mentioned in the description. I will choose the third one. Its shape is looking fine to me. You can choose any other brush if you want. Press D for default black and white color and paint over. But you can see the effect we are getting is not good because the brush is constant. It needs to have some dynamics to it. So press Ctrl or Command Z to undo it. Now go to Windows, Brush Settings. Here we will click on shape dynamics and increase the angle jitter to 100%. It will add different angles to the brush. You can see the view in the bottom. Let's test it out here. Click and drag. You can see the difference now. Let's undo it and start painting from the corner. The color I am picking will be the outer color of the image. With left or right bracket key you can increase or decrease the size of brush. And while holding Alt, you can switch between brush tool and the eyedropper tool. It will make your workflow a lot more faster. I know this is looking quite messy for now, but believe me, it will look good. It is just a matter of time. You can take your time in this process. After you are done, drag the watercolor layer right below the image layer. Hide the watercolor layer for now. Select the image layer. While holding Alt, add a negative layer mask on it. It will hide everything from the layer. Take the brush tool, set its opacity to 20%, choose the color white and start painting. I think we can add a white background to get a better view. 
So add your adjustment layer of solid color, set the color white, hit OK. Now the result will look more clear, click on image mask and start painting. And remember I just click one time and paint over it. If I click again, it will add the value and it will make its opacity to 40%. So we will work like watercolor coat. First it will be a 20% opacity coat. Then it will again 20% it will add up to 40% and later on it will increase by 100%. Our main task is to add variety of coats on the outer portion of the image and some of them in between. It will create a more natural effect just like a watercolor. Now this is looking good. You can see the outer portion is very light. Now we will work on the sketch lines. Unhide the sketch line layer. Select it. Press Ctrl or Command J to create a duplicate layer. Now press Ctrl or Command I to inverse the colors. Set the blend mode to color dodge. Now go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Set the radius to 5. Hit OK. While holding shift select both layers and press Ctrl or Command D to merge them. All lines are looking colorful but we only want black lines so press Ctrl or Command U for hue saturation options and set the saturation to minus 100. Hit OK. To make this effect more darker, press Ctrl or Command J to duplicate this layer and set the blend mode to multiply. Now while holding shift select both layers and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them. Set the layer mode to multiply. Let's unhide all layers to see how it looks together. I think we need to reduce the lines from the bottom. Let's first rename this layer as sketch line. Add a layer mask on it. Set the color black. Choose the soft round brush. Increase the opacity to 100. Increase the size and paint over. This is looking good. Let's add some edits to the watercolor layer as well. Select the watercolor layer. Take the eraser tool, right click, choose the watercolor splatter brush, set its opacity to 40% and start painting on the outer portion. And I didn't use the shape dynamics because I want a constant brush to get more control. Let's add a background to make the effect more realistic. Rotate it, while holding Alt Shift, scale it up, scale it more from the left, move it to the center, right click place. I know the background color is not matching so we will change its color to white. So to do that press Ctrl or Command U for hue saturation options. Set the saturation to minus 100. Hit OK. Press Ctrl or Command J to duplicate the layer and set the blend mode to linear dodge add. While holding shift select both layers press Ctrl or Command E to merge the layers. Zoom in. Rename it as background. Now to enhance the effect, select the top layer and add a adjustment layer of vibrance. Increase the vibrance to plus 67 and saturation will be plus 6. Colors are enhanced now, but the background we just created earlier is not blending with the image. So while holding shift select the image and watercolor layers, drag it to the group icon to create a group and set the blend mode to multiply. Now our image is merged with the background. Let's add some contrast. Select the top layer in the group. Add adjustment layer of curves. Add three points and adjust them accordingly to get better contrast. To give this effect a more realistic look, select the watercolor layer. Take the brush tool. Take on shape dynamics and increase the angle jitter to 100%. Set its opacity to 20% and paint over the outer portion by picking the matching colors from the image. Be subtle as possible, don't go overboard. So we can see the difference now, this is the before, this is the after. If you learn something new, hit the subscribe button, also press the bell icon for learning updates. Let me know in the comment section how was your tutorial or if you have any doubts or suggestions for me. My name is Shubham, thank you so much for watching Graphic Arena.